Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today we have the Browser FPS tier list. Now as you guys know, we love browser games on this channel, in particular, browser first person shooters. So what we're going to be doing today is ranking 29 browser first person shooters from S tier all the way down to D tier. To make this tier list, I played a lot of browser FPS games, and I played all of them on Brave Browser, the browser that reduces lag, increases performance, and also lets you earn free cryptocurrency and money. So if you guys want to download Brave Browser, make sure to download it right now by clicking the link in the description below. Not only do you get the best experience while playing browser FPS games, but it's also the best way to support me and the channel. But with that said guys, let's get straight into the tier list. So with that said, my friends, let's get straight into it. We've got 29 games right here, and this is going to be really interesting. We've got S tier, which means basically the best of the best. This is the cream of the crop of the browser FPS genre. And then we go lower and lower. C, B tier is, you know, pretty average. D means not so good. Generally, my expectations for browser games aren't as high as other games like other first person shooters. With that said, I still hold the high echelon of the S and A. A tier to quite a high standard. CS Online Club is a faithful recreation of the classic Counter-Strike 1.6, not only in terms of the aesthetic and the visuals, but also the gameplay, the maps, the modes, the whole experience is pretty much encapsulated within this game. Now with that said, this game does take a little bit of a while to first load in, because you have to go and download the assets to your browser, but with that said, it's still fully playable within the browser environment, and it is a really, really, really solid game. If you want to play some CS with your friends, and you don't have Steam and you just want to hop on, this is one of them. I'm going to put in the A tier for now. It's probably an A+. Plus. This is super, super solid. It's literally the gameplay just ported across to the browser. All right, let's go and close my eyes and pick another game. And we have got Bullet Force. Okay, Bullet Force is, it's a good one. Bullet Force was by far the original Call of Duty-like browser FPS game. It's got that more heavy, sluggish mechanics, but also much more detailed weapons, maps, and just overall gameplay. The graphics are also really, really impressive for a browser game, especially because this came out a long, long time ago, and the game still has a fairly solid player base. Now, the PC browser version hasn't been updated in quite a long time. However, the iOS and Android, the mobile version, is actually quite up to date. Now that doesn't mean that you shouldn't play the browser version because it's still uh, quite a lot of fun, but it's not a game that I would sink a lot of time into. It's more so you hop on for 5 to 10 minutes, you have a bit of fun, and then you hop off. But with that said, I think I'm going to go and put it in the B tier. Currently, it's definitely better than Global Strike, but it is definitely worse than Online Club. It, Online Club just has overall better gameplay. All right, closing my eyes again, let's pick another game, and we have got Venge.io. Okay, this is a bit of a polarizing one. Now, Venge is made by the same guy that made Mini Royale and Mini Royale 2, and this is actually a really, really solid game. It goes and takes inspiration from hero shooters. You've got three heroes, three characters that you can choose from, each with their own abilities, and the gameplay is very objective-focused, going and holding objective to get points. This game has four different weapons you can choose from, assault rifle, sniper rifle, shotgun, and some machine gun, and you can swap between all of them in game. And there's also quite a few different maps to choose from as well. So this game has a lot of content. Compared to when I last checked this game out, Venge.io has had a lot more content added to it. More maps, and more modes, and just overall a much, much more refined experience. And this is something that I think is definitely in, in the B to A tier, I reckon, I would put it, you know, A minus or B plus. So we're going to put it here. Basically, when it comes to rankings, if it's at the top, it's definitely the highest in that tier. If it's at the bottom, it's the lowest in that tier. All right, closing my eyes, we've got a ton more games to look through. And let's go and talk about this one. Let's just get this out of the way. It's called Realistic Zombie War or something like that. And it's a bit of a mess. The only reason I'm including this game is because it was one of the most played in crazygames.com. It has like the list of shooters and this was near the top. And I don't really know why. Basically, this is a zombie defense game. You go and choose a weapon, you go and shoot zombies, you get more ammo, you get more points and whatnot. You can buy better guns, etc, etc. And that in concept is really good. Of course, we've got Black Ops zombies, etc. But this game is so half-baked. 
the map is just like a square that has a grass texture. The weapons you can get, I think there's only four and you can get them relatively easy. The ammo station where you can get health and ammo and etc is just basically across from the weapons. There's nothing to work for, there's nothing really to unlock. So overall, it's a really half-baked package. If there's more content put into the game because the basic mechanics aren't that bad, it could definitely get a higher spot on this list, but because of the game just having nothing really to it, it's going to be the first game to be in the D spot. Alright, let's go and choose another game, and this time we have got Minecraft Classic. Now you guys would be saying, UCD, why are you including Minecraft on this list? Not only is it not a first person shooter, but it's also not in the browser. Well firstly, the game is in the first person perspective, so technically it does make sense. But two, I'm not talking about the normal Minecraft, I'm talking about Minecraft Classic. Now the normal Minecraft is feature packed, but this is basically a nostalgic hit from the past, where you get to go and see the version of Minecraft that is over 10 years old and it's quite easy to access through the browser. Basically, all you can do in this version is place blocks and walk around a relatively limited world, and it's really just a prototype showcase of what the game is all about. But what you can also go and do is invite your friends to a multiplayer session, and that's the reason why I think this game is kind of cool to mention, because you can get two, three, four of your friends, and you can start doing uh, building structures and stuff like that, and just having a little bit of fun. But with that said, Minecraft Classic is a bit of a gimmick and it's not a game that you'll be playing for quite a long time. So with that said, we're going to put it in the C tier. Alright, we have a ton of games left, so let's go and choose the next one, and that is Wolf 3D. Okay, this game is basically the grandfather of all first person shooters. Wolfenstein 3D was a game that was published in 1992, way before me and probably a lot of people watching this video were even born, but despite its age, it's still a must play first person shooter. The concept is simple, escape Castle Wolfenstein. You simply have a weapon at the start, but you'll get more and more weapons as you go through through each and every level until you get to the final final boss at the very very end. Every level is basically a maze that you have to go and work out and despite it being a single player game you get super super into it trying to go and beat each level. Graphically the game doesn't compare to many of these more newer games on this list but it's still a joy to look at with its very unique art style. You then go and have the fantastic gameplay, the really really brutal difficulty that you can set it to and over Overall, this is an experience that everybody has to go and try out. And so with that said, I'm going to go and put it as our first S tier. So as you can see, we've got a pretty wide range right now. We've got one in D, we've got one in S. Let's see what the next game goes and entails. And the next game is Mini Royale 2. As said before, made by the guy that made Venge, Mini Royale 2 is a first person shooter battle royale game. It's super simple. You drop in, you shoot some people, and whoever's the last person standing goes and wins. There is a little bit of depth in terms of you can actually uh, customize your loadout so you can choose if you want a backpack or a health or a syringe to go and give you a little bit of health back. So that's a little bit of customization at the start, but then when you hop in, it's pretty standard. You pick up your weapons, you pick up your ammo, you can pick up sights as well, and you you just have to blast the opponents. The game also has a capture the flag mode which is fantastic, so a little bit of diversification there along with a ton of different servers in different regions. And Mini Royale 2 is one of those games where it's probably the best battle royale FPS experience in the browser right now, however, however, it's one of those games where I want to see a little bit more content put into it and push forward a little bit. But with that said, I still think it is really, really solid, it's probably a B minus A plus probably very similar to bullet force so what we're gonna go and do is probably put it in this tier for now all right guys we've got quite a few games here so the next one I'm gonna talk about is quake JS which is basically a browser port of quake Free arena now this one is pretty self-explanatory it takes the whole quake Free arena multiplayer experience and puts it in the browser and that's perfect not only because this game is really really easy to run but also if you just want to hop in and have some quake fun with your friends you just give them the link they hop in nice and easy no problem 
So I've been singing the praises of this game, but it does have a bit of a problem in terms of the player base. Now, if you're at peak time US and Europe, you'll have no problem finding a game. But for me in Australia, it's a little bit difficult. But this game is really meant for if you have four or five friends and you're just at a random, you know, LAN party or something like that, and you want to play some Quake and nobody has it installed, you hop on here, you pass around the link and you have an absolute bowl of fun. So with that said, it's going to be going in the B tier. The lack of a super active player base meant it doesn't go in the A tier, same as CS Online Club. It's not really the game's fault, but to be fair, I do have to factor that in because I am recommending games to people at the very least. The next game I want to talk about is Rebel Forces because this goes into the whole tier of really poorly made Unity games that somebody's just put onto the browser and then some people play it. Okay, that might be a little bit harsh because Rebel Forces is somewhat enjoyable. The gameplay, the gunplay, the movement, it's all messed up. Gravity is just all over the place, the guns don't feel good, you just kind of fire rockets at other people and that's basically the extent of the fun. Now quite a few people do play this and actually does have a campaign mode as well and the visuals aren't the worst but you can tell a lot of them are just assets and that is what a lot of these browser FPS games like that I haven't included on this list so this goes and represents quite a lot of games to be fair now that's not saying that the game isn't fun to play because it actually is kind of fun to just run around with rocket launcher just moon jumping around the map there is a little bit of enjoyment in that but there is basically next to no longevity you play it for five minutes and you've seen everything that this game has to offer okay so with a relatively bad game out of the way let's talk about a good game and hey Merc Zone is a pretty good game indeed Merc Zone is quite unique in terms of its visual aspect. It has a very minimalistic aesthetic where the graphics are very understated and so the focus really goes on the gameplay and the gameplay is top notch. The assault rifle, the sniper rifle, the shotgun, they all hit really, really hard. The animations, the sounds are fantastic. So when you're actually going and taking down people, you actually get a little bit of feedback rather than some of these other games where you just get a kill and it's like, oh, I just got a kill. This one feels a lot, lot better. Now, mode-wise, we've only got free-for-all and team deathmatch. However, map-wise, it more than makes up for it. Each map is well-crafted and really highlights the strength of each and every weapon, which is fantastic. And if you get a little bit bored in the match and you're just not doing well with a certain weapon, you can just quickly swap onto another one. Mechanics-wise, there's also a sliding mechanics, which is really cool. You can get some style kills. And overall, this game, it's really, really fun to go on big, big streaks. And the game goes and rewards you with this really booming uh, theatric sound whenever you go and get a lot of kills in a row, which is fantastic. While Merc Zone is relatively new, it is a really, really solid game. And I think it's one of those games that deserves the A spot. I would put it maybe ahead of CS Online Club just because of the originality with the classes and the gameplay and the maps, etc, etc. But these games, they're all in a very, very similar tier. Alright guys, Polly Blicky. This is a game made by the same guy that makes Rush Team and he also makes another game on here, War Attack. He's got three games on this list. He's a very well-known uh, browser FPS developer. And Polly Blicky is his most recent endeavor. And this is actually a really solid game. While it isn't necessarily really inventive, it doesn't go just outside the scope of all these other browser FPS games. It does what it does really, really well. Just solid, team deathmatch based gameplay where you have two teams that just find each other, you've got a lot of weapons to choose from and it's a lot of fun. Now given the name Poly Blicky, it's got that polygon based graphics which looks fantastic and when you go and have these, you know, more cartoonish characters, it actually goes in contrast quite well to the quite brutal gameplay of just getting headshot, headshot, headshot and just going in these massive, massive streaks if you can go and try to spawn trap the opponents. There's a lot of weapons to choose from, there's a lot of skins to choose from as well, and there is actually quite an active player voice across many, many servers. So this is a game that has a lot going for it for just a relatively new title. Still, more content needs to be developed, more maps, more modes, etc, etc. But for now, for now, man, Polly Blicky, it's got my uh, it's got my thumbs up right here. I have checked it out before in a previous video, but I need to check it out again. I reckon it's definitely gonna be near the top of the B tier, kind of edgy into the A tier right now. I'd probably put it here, but it's like a B plus A minus in that zone. 
The next game to talk about is Super Hot. Now, this is a super popular game on Steam. It's a time bending game and it's an absolutely fantastic experience. But what we're going to be talking about today is the browser based version. Now, the browser version is just a prototype of the main game. The team did it in like a game of fun. They made it in a couple of days. And overall, for a game that was made very quickly, it is super, super fun. The concept is super simple. You just stay still, time doesn't go. You move, time moves. So basically, you can go and use it to line up shots and take out your enemies in each and every level, progressing through, I think, five or six stages until you get the end of the demo. While this game isn't long at all, it's one of those games where you can hop on and play for like five to six minutes, clear out the whole game, and then when you come back in like three to four months, you can just go and do it again because the core gameplay is super, super interesting with the time bending mechanic. So with that said, I think it's like the full game is like an S tier, right? The prototype maybe an A to B because it isn't really a full game. It's just kind of like a demo. I'm probably going to go and put it in the B tier, but the actual gameplay is super, super fun. So maybe need an A. I'm not 100% sure. All right, guys, let's talk about 1v1.lol because this is a little bit of a different experience to the rest of the games on this list. This game is a third person shooter in comparison to being a first person shooter like all the other games are. But I include it on this list because it's such a fundamentally good shooter that doesn't really care about graphics. It only cares about raw gameplay. 1v1.lol is basically Fortnite in the browser. You've got your building, you've got your shooting, and this is the perfect aim trainer if you just, just want to make sure everything is precise before you hop on the battlefield. Not only do we have a battle royale format, we have duos, we have squads, we have a 1v1 dot mode, we've got a competitive mode. This is really, really feature packed, a lot of customization with the settings as well. So you can go and make your sensitivity basically exactly like all your other games and you can use it as an aim trainer. Super easy to hop in, super easy to go and just practice your building and stuff like that without having to go into an actual game of Fortnite and get all your mats and all that. This is just a really accessible format. Really recommend this one if you're a Fortnite fan, but even if you're not, go and check it out regardless. This is, I don't think it's S tier material. Again, it's in that A to A, maybe A plus tier. I think this is definitely really, really, really high quality game, despite it looking, you know, not so good. The graphics don't really care about those in this one. It's all about the gameplay, and the gameplay is pretty solid. Now, we all know Krunker.io, but before we talk about that, I want to talk about Vertex Online, the game made by Sydney and Vince before Krunker.io. This game goes and retains a lot of the styling of Krunker.io. We've got the classes, we've got the trigger man, the hunter, the running gun, etc, etc. But this is in a 2D top-down format. Well, kind of top-down, like kind of side-on, up-and-down format. A little bit weird, but the gameplay really works. Despite being an older game and not in active development, Vertex Online still has a decent player base because a lot of people like the difference in gameplay, the 2D, you know, top-down gameplay compared to, you know, the 3D first-person shooterness of Krunker.io. It's a completely different idea, but it works fantastically. Now, it's definitely not the A tier given that, you know, it's a little bit underdeveloped and it doesn't have the, the bells and whistles of something like Merc Zone, etc, etc, or CS Online Club, but it's still a relatively solid first person shooter and I'll put it near the top end of the B tier in my opinion, you know, somewhere around Mini Royale and Bullet Force because it's still a really, really solid game. Now, talking about solid games, let's go and talk about Shellshockers, Shellshockers.io. This is one of the weirdest games on this list because it's basically a first-person shooter where the characters are all eggs and it's all like eggs and chicken themed. It's very, very weird. The theme is completely weird, but the gameplay is solid. You've got different classes to choose from, assault rifle, submachine gun, sniper rifle, etc. But in comparison to all of these games here, this has the most hardcore combat because you can't just spray your assault rifle from across the map or just spray your sniper rifle whatever and just get quick scopes and whatever. Every weapon in this game requires patience to go and use because the accuracy just goes completely haywire if you spray it. The sniper rifle, you have to wait for it to basically charge up in a way you for the accuracy to kind of just set on 100%. The uh, submachine gun, terrible pass even close to medium range, long range, no hope at all. So you have to really strategically 
choose your battles in this game and that's a bit of a a bit of a fr breath of fresh air compared to let's say Krunker where you can go and use every weapon at basically every range. The graphics are fantastic, it runs really well, a lot of people keep playing it and for good reason because this is a different experience to basically everything else on this list and for that reason it deserves the A spot. I think it's again one of those A plus S minus games. Oh, should I put an S tier? I'll put it in the A tier for now. I'll probably do some shuffling later on. I'm a little bit uncommittal in the S tier right now. But man, this is really, really, really quite a solid game. Alright my friends, let's go and talk about Eve.io. And this is a game that more than likely none of you guys have ever heard of because I've never talked about it before and there isn't too many videos on YouTube about it. But this is a relatively new arena first person browser shooter and... This game is good. This game is really, really good. Gameplay mechanics wise, it is really, really sick. It's fast paced, super easy to go and run around the map, and the gunplay is great as well. You aim down sights, the shots go and hit, and you feel like you're doing a ton of damage to the enemies. The player base is really, really built up as well, so the free throw servers, they are full, so you're finding people left, right, and center. You're going crazy, taking them out. It is a lot of fun. Now, what I've said does apply to many of these other games, but Eve.io wraps it in a sci-fi package, which is fantastic, but it's also really, really really smooth, really, really solid in terms of the gameplay, but also it has that little cherry on top with abilities. With the abilities in this game, you have normal frag grenade, you have a flash grenade, but you also have a teleport, and that teleport you can use to get on top of ledges, you can use to do a little bit of a flank around your opponent, and it goes and introduces a new mechanic that is really, really fantastic for just going and spicing up the gameplay a bit. This game has a lot of quake running through its veins. It is a ton of fun, and even though it's a relatively unknown game, man, I really want to go and give it the S tier list because it does the fundamentals so, so well as a solid player base. The UI is easy to use. Sorry for hitting my mic. The, uh, the abilities are great. The gunplay is great. It's super accessible, super fun. It does what Merc Zone does, but I'd say even cleaner, which is fantastic. I want to see more content. I want to see more stuff to this game. But man, I, 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 for now, I'll put it at the top of the A list. But man, I, if I had more content, this would definitely be S tier. The next game to talk about is Voxium. Now, it says Voxium Battle Royale because there is a Battle Royale version and then a normal version, but we'll talk about that when the time comes. Now, Voxium is an Ace of Spades, Minecraft, Sector's Edge-like game where it is a fully destructible environment. Well, to, to an extent, fully destructible. It, it's a Minecrafty, like blocky universe where you have your spade and you can go knock down blocks and you can go mine and so on and so on. And you can make paths around the map to try to flank around your opponent. The building is isn't as extensive as it is in other games because you still have to go and take a little bit of a while to mine through one block so it's not supposed to be the biggest component but you can also do building and stuff like that that just really mess up the environment a little. Gunplay wise you go shoot 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 the enemies go down the battle royale mode is fine and overall this game is quite solid but nothing is super astounding and for that reason it sits very nicely in the B tier. I'll probably put it like here for now. I reckon here's a pretty decent spot. This one's been looking at me for a while. It's Bullet Party 2. This very, very simply is Bullet Force just ripped off, but worse. The mechanics are somehow like just really janky and weird. The maps are weird. The gameplay is weird. It is, it's an overall mess. It's a bit of a mess. It's not as much of a mess as Rebel Forces and Realistic Zombie, but it's still a game that I wouldn't recommend. It's in that whole, you know, Unity type style that I was talking about with Rebel Forces. It's in that zone where it takes something and just does it a lot worse and it, it doesn't really get played. I put it on here because it's, you know, at the top. It was previously recommended to me by somebody, but it's not really that good of a game. It's going in the D tier, but at the top of the D tier at least. Okay, Warm Arise. This is an interesting game. Warm Arise Red vs. Blue is a sci-fi browser FPS, and it's one of the uh, founding fathers of the browser FPS genre. This game is quite, quite old. It also does something a little bit different compared to a lot of games here. We've actually got vehicles, so you can go and hop in like a land cruiser of some kind, like a hover cruiser, and you can cruise around the map and shoot opponents and whatever. There is limited servers, uh, mainly US and Europe based. Gunplay, 
it goes back to an older time where the gunplay is very static, the characters don't have much responsiveness to them, and we'll see that with a couple of other games that I'm going to talk about later on. But it's one of those where the gunplay isn't that fun, but it takes you back to a bit of a nostalgic time in the browser FPS sphere. Now nowadays, it's definitely not a game that you should play, Eve, you know, just does what it does but way, way better in terms of the sci-fi feel. But it's still, you know, a decently fun, okay game to play. It has, you know, that kind of static -y movement that we see in, you know, Global Strike as well. So we're going to chuck it in the, the bottom of the seat here. It's playable, but not recommended. All right, guys, we're on the final stretch. Let's talk about War Brokers. Now, War Brokers is a really, really cool experience. We have got more refined gameplay than we see in something like Voxium. The characters move a little bit more oomph to them, and the gunplay also hits harder. The maps are actually kind of huge in this game as well. And also, you can go and bring in, like, airstrikes and stuff like that. It definitely is a bit more of an upscaled experience. War Brokers visually is also really, really good, definitely if you love my Minecraft and stuff like that and it also has a battle royale mode too a lot of these browser games are going in that direction and for good reason it is a super super popular format war brokers overall really really solid game and I think for that it definitely sits in the BT it does a lot of stuff right but it doesn't go and really excel it doesn't really go and push itself it just sits in its nice little spot and does what it does really nicely all right, my friends, let's go and talk about Rush Team. And similarly to like Warmerize, this is quite an old browser first person shooter. It's been out quite a long time. And it goes down more of the military route. We've got, you know, stand on military, you know, sniper rifles, assault rifles, etc. And the movement goes and reflects that as well of an older time, you know, like the combat arms and the AVAs where the, the movement is a bit more static. It doesn't have the flowiness that we see in the Call of Duties, etc. right now. But that also goes and brings back a lot of nostalgia. Rush Team Vogue does everything in that era very very well we've got huge teams probably the biggest teams out of everything on this list maybe CS online club might have you know bigger matches overall but this is quite quite good we have got a lot of frantic just spraying of weapons very tight corridor -y maps very symmetrical maps that we see in games like crossfire it's really bringing back that crossfire vibe that we've talked about before with some of these other games now with that said rush team visually fantastic as well and the sniping it actually really really is quite fun sniping people across the map the maps are really really quite large and actually have some detail as well which is really really good rush team another one of the games made by the developer of poly blicky but this one was his first and it is a classic for a reason and has a very very considerable player base still a lot of people playing this game so if you like what you see you can definitely go and get around it so we're probably going to put it in like the middle of the B tier maybe like here or something like that and we'll move something like that here and something like that there maybe that that's a pretty decent pretty decent spot right for, for right now now since we just talked about rush team let's talk about war attack the third game in the trio of games made by the same developer now this game is definitely the weakest out of the three now visually it actually is quite nice but it's got that cartoony aesthetic and that translates into the gameplay as not really hard hitting when if you go and take somebody down they just kind of fall down you go and put a lot of bullets into them and it doesn't really it, it, there's not much of a response. It's not really fulfilling gameplay. To be fair, it's quite easy to just run around the map and just spray your assault rifle and have a little bit of fun, but it doesn't have the scale of Rush Team and it do doesn't have the polish of Poly Blicky. So it's kind of like in a weird combination between two. And to be fair, this was made after Rush Team and before Poly Blicky. So you can see how Poly Blicky has really gone and transformed the experience and is a much more well refined game. War Attack is still fun, people still go and play it, but for me, it's my least favourite of the three, and I'm going to put it in the C spot, probably uh, before Warmerize, yeah, probably at the lowest part of the C tier for now. Alright guys, we're getting to the end of the list, and hey, let's talk about Raid Land. This is another wild card, it's a third person shooter, medieval combat game, so really it's not a first person shooter. It really shouldn't even be on this list, but hey, I include it for some reason, so let's talk about it. This game is actually a bundle of fun, it is really good. It's on Steam, not only on the browser, and basically you choose one of three classes, either the sword guy, the hunter who has a bow, or the berserker who has a massive staff. 
but to give some depth to the gameplay, each class has an ability. So the main sword guy, he has a shield and he can run at people. The berserker, he can just go and swipe people. That's a lot of fun. And then the hunter, the sniper, you know, hunter bow guy, he can go and roll and evade attacks and be a bit more nimble than the rest of the classes. But if you go and create an account and level up, you can actually swap out those abilities to just something completely different that you can also go and unlock. Now the gameplay is not only just mindless combat, but also you have objective focus where you have to go and get enough gold and if you do go and get the most gold, you will go and win. On top of that, the game is really, really nicely presented. It's got a great main menu, a lot of unlocks and progression as well, which is fantastic. While Raiderland probably doesn't need to be on this list because it isn't a browser first person shooter, hey, let's raid it anyway. It's probably actually in the A tier actually, probably at the lower end of the A tier, but in the general scope of uh, browser games, I probably would say it'd be in the A tier as well. It is a really cool experience. All right, Crazy Pixel Apocalypse, let's talk about this really quickly. This game is a mess. This is a complete mess of a game. You just hop into like a Minecrafty bright world. You've got all these crazy guns. You just shoot people with rocket launchers and whatever. But surprisingly, it's, it's done quite well. The UI is completely garbage of those. We've got to take off points for that. And the gameplay where the bullets work, it's just super, super weird. But again, it's kind of like the rebel forces and the bullet bullet party where it's just a lot of fun to just hop in and shoot people but this one is definitely much more of a composed package like it's actually like a playable game that you could play for a decent amount of time you know maybe five ten minutes but you know more time than rebel forces at least and for that reason, I think it's probably going to be at the bottom of the C tier. To be fair, War Attack is a much better game than Crazy Pixel, but Crazy Pixel, I don't think it's as bad to be in the D tier. The next game we're talking about is Repulous, and this is a game that I didn't really know much about until, you know, someone just recommended it and I checked it out. And this is actually a really, you know, quite decent experience. It's very similar in terms of like Merc Zone, for example, where you have four class of four weapons to go and choose from. You just hop in game and you just start shooting. It's relatively simple. Free for all, really easy, just shoot all your enemies. And then you've got more team deathmatch orientated modes where there's actually vehicles as well, which is great. It's got the sci-fi wrapping, which is fantastic. It's got a really, really uh, nice soundscape to it as well. Uh, it's actually got voiceover when you get kills and that, which a lot of these games actually don't do, which is quite nice. It's easy to run, easy to hop in, actually a lot of people, but to be fair, a lot of these people acted like bots, so I'm not 100% sure if it's just been padded with bots, so every time you hop in, you get a full match, but some of the people actually were shooting quite well, so maybe I'm just being a little bit paranoid. But with that said, you know, pretty decent game. I don't think it's, you know, as of the quality of all these, you know, ones right here, but you know, we could probably slot it around, you know, around here and stuff like that. And I think it would do pretty well. All right, my friends, Ford Assault Remix. I don't, I didn't leave it to the last for any particular reason, but this is basically Bullet Force, but like Bullet Force 2.0. This goes and takes what of a Bullet Force did and just took it to the next level kind of thing. It goes and it has, you know, a slightly sharper gameplay, more weapons, a more active play base, etc., etc. And to be fair, I'm pretty sure that it's just based off Bullet Force, but it's just Bullet Force again. I'm not 100% sure if it's even the same studio or not. But with that said, it runs well, it plays well. I didn't leave it to the end for any particular reason, but it's like here. They're basically the same game. This one, I think it's just a bit more actively developed. Second to last, let's go and talk about Doom. And this is again, another one of the grandfather first person shooter games. First up we had Wolf 3D and then we had Doom and then we had Quake, etc., etc. And Doom just goes and iterates on the formula. Yes, you can still go and play it with just the keyboard. You don't need a mouse. So it's perfect if you're in like at school or in the lecture field or whatever. But it's again, another single player FPS game where you go through level after level going and taking out demons in this case instead of you know uh, enemies and you just go through the level pick up different weapons and you just go and just have a ton of fun. 
Doom is one of those games, like Wolf 3D, where you can go and hop on in a lecture feed or whatever, and just go and play it, there's no multiplayer, you can do it at your own pace, whatever, and there's no lag, so once it's loaded, you can just go and you don't need to worry about, like, laggy internet, or whatever, and yes, the majority of these are multiplayer FPS games, but I really like single player browser FPS games as well, if there's any more, tell me in the comment section below, but for high high for how high quality this game is, it again deserves the S tier spot. Wolf 3D got it for the first time, but Doom goes and gets it as well. This game is this game is really good. Now, before we do Cronker.io, let's do a little bit of shuffling. Now, obviously, these games are on a little bit of a different tier, right? This is S tier of, you know, AAA in its time games that were made, not necessarily for the browser. Let's go and pull some games from the A tier up to the S tier, but we'll just say this is one tier and this is the other stuff will be another tier. CS Online Club deserves it. Merc Zone deserves it. I'd say even EVE deserves it, a relatively new game, I think that deserves it as well, it's a really really fun experience. Then looking at stuff in the B tier right here, man maybe even Polly Blicky goes up here, Polly Blicky here, I'd say maybe Forward Assault, maybe here or something like that. I think that is a fairly even, you know, even distribution of the games and I think it's relatively fair. But they're going to end off the list, let's go and talk about Krunker.io, the game that everybody's talking about, the game that I go and play so much of, and hey, we've got to include it on the list, even though you guys probably know where it's going to land. It is one of the most well-developed browser first-person shooter games that is currently being developed right now. The gameplay fantastic the movement slide hopping around the map is addicting the gunplay with all the different weapons fantastic you've got all the different modes you've got the maps you've got the community server you've got the massive community as well this is the browser fps game to play right now if you are not playing it yes all of these games are fantastic but this one gives the most well-rounded experience and for that you got to chuck in the S tier spot. It is the gold standard for browser FPS right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tier list. It took me over two and a half hours to make this video. So please give it a like rating and subscribe if you want more videos on browser FPS games. But other than that, this is Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under, out.